Well, Mark and I are still at Car Creek Park in Seattle, Washington, and now we want to talk about the conjunction sentence and the associated conjunction function. So let's think about this sentence, Ann is home and Bob is home. It's obviously a compound sentence, that is a sentence that has within itself one or more sentences. Within this sentence we see the sentence Ann is home and we see the sentence Bob is home. So this is an embedded sentence within the compound. This is an embedded sentence within the compound or a component sentence. So this compound has two component sentences. The word and is obviously functioning as a sentence operator. Remember a sentence operator is a word or a phrase that joins one or more sentences into a compound. And the sentence as a whole is called a conjunction when it's formed in this way. So this set is called the left conjunct of the conjunction, and this is, call, is the right conjunct of the conjunction, and then the whole thing is, is called a conjunction. The word and is the operator that forms it, and it's called the conjunction operator, and it's also called the conjunction function for a reason we'll see in a moment. Now, I'm using the word and to assert exactly this. I'm using the word and here to assert that both conjuncts are true and nothing more. When we use the word and or any other word to join two sentences together to form a compound and assert nothing more than that both of the components are true, then the word and is functioning as a conjunction operator and the sentence as a whole counts as a conjunction. Now if you think about it, there's a functional relationship between the truth values of the parts of this sentence, the two component sentences within it, and the truth value of the compound as a whole. And that function is that the compound as a whole is true only when both components are true, and the compound as a whole is false in all other cases. So now I'm going to call on Mark to put that information into the form of a table. And uh, Mark, do you want to explain how the table works, okay. what you're going to use for your symbols and all that? Well, we're going to set the table up the way we have the others. Uh, we'll have A, capital A for Anna's home, B uh, for Bob is home. So we'll have A's and B's. And the way we would translate it is with that ampersand, Anna's home and Bob is home. And we have four possible situations. Either they're both true, one's true, the other's false, or they're both false. We've seen how that works before. Uh, <clears throat> and fortunately, this works exactly the way you would expect. It's really commonsensical. If both sides are true, that's when the ampersand or the conjunction is going to be true. So if both sides are true, then you know the statement as a whole is true. If one of the sides is false, though, like in this case, or the third case, the ampersand, that is a conjunction, is going to be false. And surely, if both sides are false, the conjunction is going to be false. So the conjunction will be true as long as both of the conjuncts are true. If I walk in the room and say I'm wearing a shirt and I'm holding a pen, you'd agree with me right now. Uh, but if I say I'm wearing a hat and, wearing a ho and I'm holding a pen, you'd disagree. If one of the sides is false, the conjunction as a whole will be false. So it's pretty intuitive. And then, and then can I throw something sure. in here? So. So uh, we're using the ampersand to represent the conjunction operator and or any other word that functions as a conjunction operator, asserting that both conjuncts are true and nothing more. So words like uh, but, moreover, although, however, uh, nevertheless, these are all words that can be used to form a conjunction asserting that both conjuncts are true. Mm -hmm. So they all can be represented by the ampersand symbol in this case the and was, and then the way you read this table is the rows are horizontal and the columns are vertical. And just remember that the first row is to be understood as the case where A and B are both true, and it tells us that the conjunction as a whole, Mark refers to the value of the conjunction by referring to the ampersand. The, the row tells us that when A and B are both true, the conjunction as a whole is true. That's what that true really means. And this row says when A is true and B is false, in that case, 
the conjunction as a whole is false. And for each of these uh, tables, there's one idea that sums the whole table up. What's the the sing single idea that sums up this whole table? Whenever a conjunction's true, both sides will be true. There's only one situation where that happens. So that's the key situation here. Is you know the only way you're going to make a conjunction true is if both of the conjuncts are true. If any of the conjuncts are false ever, you know the conjunction's false. And that's one idea sums up yeah. the whole table. It's only true when both conjuncts are true. Otherwise, yeah. it's false. And uh, this table represents a relationship between the truth values of the parts and the truth value of the whole. And that relationship is functional. So a function, remember, is a rule that relates one set of values to another set of values. Since this is a rule relating one set of values to another set of values, this counts as a function. Since it's truth values that are being related, it's a truth function. So this is a truth function. A rule that relates truth values to truth values in a functional way, in a spe specified way. Since this is the function or the relationship associated with the conjunction operator, this is the conjunction function. Yep. And Mark is going to sing the little song now <laughs> about the conjunction function, aren't you? The conjunction? I have you're no not clue what you're talking to. about. Okay. Paul knows the good songs. But that's, uh, you that's, should get him to sing the song. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>